Armand here with your forecast for the month of June 2023. You want useful advice in the first 30 seconds? Here you go. If you have anything practical to get done this month, try to get it done in the first half of the month. There's a couple of little caveats and a few hiccups in the first half, and there's some easy spaces in the second half of the month. But basically speaking, try to get stuff done in the first half of the month if it's a practical matter. Now, we'll be most of the first half of the month where you are waning from the full moon into the new moon, which suggests more time to wrap things up. Might be a good idea to finish up projects and any outstanding work that you want to get done before the summertime. For example, try to get that done now rather than waiting until later in June. Okay, practical advice. We will unpack the different aspects for the weeks uh, during the uh, regular weekly forecast, and you want to subscribe to watch those. But you know, you get a little useful advice right up at the front end of this. Now we begin June with the Sagittarius full moon on June 3rd. That's a Saturday. Sagittarius full moon. That's great. Much better than last month's Scorpio full moon. Sagittarius full moon on a Saturday should make for a really great weekend, June 3rd and 4th, especially because Venus trines Neptune on June 2nd, answer to Pisces. Ought to be a really nice kind of vibe for that weekend. So the first weekend of the month, I'm thinking it's really good for getting out, partying, having a good time. Just enjoy yourself, you know, whatever you want to do. Only caveat is that it is Sagittarius, so there is a certain polarization potential. So if you start talking politics or social issues and things like that with folks, things could get a little heated. But, you know, that's kind of true all the time anyway. So it should be a really good first weekend of the month. Then on Monday, June 5th, uh, Venus goes into Leo. Now, Venus goes into Leo. She trades that sort of Cancerian, family-oriented vibe uh, for the more outgoing, fun, party attitude of Leo. Now, that's really good, except... Except this year, first of all, Venus is going to be in Leo all summer long, right? She'll be in Leo through September because she's retrograding. And that's a caveat. Venus is going to retrograde in the sign. We're going to start to see her slowing down pretty quickly now. And she's not in the shadow of her retrograde as the month begins, but we're going to get there pretty quickly. And so what we're looking here is a little bit less maybe of that outgoing fun energy. But what's even more dramatic is that the first thing she does when she gets into the sign, less than two hours into the sign of Leo, like, here I am, it's great, opposes Pluto in Aquarius. Now, on a personal level, this could be things like, do we just go do our own fun thing together, you and me, or do we do a group activity? Or it could be, do we just go do something fun, watch a movie or something like that, or you know, whatever you do for fun. Uh, and or do we go to the, you know, the the lecture, the political group meeting or something like that? Pluto and Aquarius, Venus and Leo. Okay, those are some of the ways it may play out on a personal level. But you know what? It's Monday. And this aspect doesn't really have much of a buildup. So I wouldn't worry about it really, you know, contaminating Saturday and Sunday because we have to wait for Venus really to get into the sign to make this an exact aspect. Okay, where it's likely to play out on a more practical level on a Monday is in getting values and uh, valuations correct. It's a pretty poor day to have things assessed. It's a poor day for, it's kind of hard to strike a bargain. I wouldn't say it's necessarily impossible. It's not a great day for striking a bargain on something. It's because it's hard to find value. You know, Venus and Leo is saying, look how beautiful, look how wonderful, look how great. Pluto and Aquarius is saying, mm, not so sure about this. It could be very hard to get funding for projects and things like that. So that Monday, a little bit, a little bit tough. It'd be interesting to see what happens on the markets on June 5th. Okay, that's one little hiccupy thing that we're getting there. And it'll play out over the course of really just Monday. It is really very much a Monday kind of energy. It'll get 
a little bit rewarmed by the Aquarius full moon, uh, not the Aquarius full moon, the Aquarius moon as we go through midweek, but don't make a thing of that. We'll talk about that in the weekly forecast. We don't need that. We have the last quarter moon in Pisces on the 10th. So we have like that week there, that second week is kind of open, good for doing stuff. You know, the Venus Pluto aspect will be behind us. Pretty good, pretty good week for getting stuff done. And then the last quarter moon on, on the 10th, still enough, still enough energy there for us as we get into the second weekend of the month. Now on the 11th, Sunday the 11th, we have a lot of stuff going on. Okay, this is a very, very busy day. First of all, Pluto retrogrades out of Aquarius and into Capricorn. Now, this is going to give us another little reminder of some of the Capricornian issues. This time, sort of the Aquarian Capricornian issues blending together. And, you know, uh, Pluto's going to be in the sign of Capricorn until January 2024. Uh, so, you know, get used to it. This is this is this is going to be a bit of a thing. He's going to be uh, retrograding and then going direct all the way through the rest of 2023 in Capricorn. Issues like the banking failures that we were seeing as he left the sign of Capricorn are going to get revisited, especially with the South Node still in the sign of Scorpio, which has a lot to do with banking. Uh, so we'll look at some of those issues, plus revisiting some of the social justice issues and this is you know I mean, it's going to play out in politics it's going to play out in a number of different ways the capricorn pluto and capricorn who's in control who has the power and pluto and aquarius the people have the power but how are they going to use it now we're going to blend these things together for a couple of years really you know what's really a positive thing as we begin the month too is that jupiter in the first few days of June 2023, Jupiter is conjunct the north node of the moon in Taurus. That should be very upbeat, optimistic for the economy uh, for the entire month of May and coming into June. The question of the U.S. debt ceiling has been an issue, and that has played havoc with the economy. As not though the economy has been playing havoc with itself, actually. But that would probably be something that hopefully we'll that's some good news about that stuff early in the month. And then, of course, Venus Pluto says, well, hmm, you know, <laughs> what exactly is happening here? So we'll go back and forth on that a bit. Anyway, so Pluto gets back into Capricorn on June 11th. Look and see what happens. That'll give us something of an idea of some of the issues, some of the flavor of the next, well, for the rest of the year. Now, also on that day, what happens is that just before he leaves Taurus, Mercury trines Pluto. That's a message that gets delivered, a real direct message that gets pushed out there on, this is June 11th, and it's got to be right there, right in the morning, or whatever, depending upon where you're watching, early on June 11th, Mercury trines Pluto. We have to wait for Pluto to get into Capricorn and Mercury at the very last moments of Taurus, there's a quick little delivery, sorry, Pat, there's a quick little delivery of the message, and then both planets sort of go on their way. Interesting to see how that plays out. Mercury does go into Gemini on the 11th, and that is his home sign, and we can hopefully feel pretty good about that. That should you know, hopefully some of these mercurial mishaps that have been occurring will abate as Mercury goes into his own sign. He's got some really harmonious aspects and one challenging aspect. Now, the other thing that happens on June 11th, and it's probably the one that most of us are going to feel most directly and, and enjoy the most, is Venus's square to Jupiter. Now you say to yourself, but wait, it's a square aspect, Dharma, and aren't those tense? Isn't there some kind of an issue that's going to happen? And the answer is maybe, maybe. I would think overindulgence is the big worry. <laughs> that you might have too good a time. Um, Venus and Jupiter rarely, rarely have a real conflict going on. They get along so well. They're BFFs. They're going to work it out, whatever is going on, unless the signs are really working against them. But with Venus and Leo 
where she is very happy and Jupiter loves the sign. And Jupiter in Taurus, which is Venus's home sign, we have what's called a reception. And so, no, I don't think it's going to be anything of a problem at all. A little over the top, a little overindulgence, a little uh, a little over enthusiasm, a little bit too much would sort of characterize the second weekend of June. So, um, and you know, that's um, that's that's not the worst kind of bad that we could have. You know, the thing about June. There's so much going on. Look, we just uh, June 11th, we've had so many things to talk about just on this one one day. But I think that the overall feel of June, despite all the activity, and there's a lot of activity, as much as in recent months, I don't think it's going to be felt so acutely. I don't think it's going to be felt so stressful as we had in, let's say, April, March, April. And even through May, I think it's a little bit easier. The celestial energies are easier. You know, what we do with it, that's our own business. Now, when we get to the 15th, we get this sort of Saturnian pivot in the month. Okay, so on the 15th, Mercury squares Saturn. Now, Mercury square to Saturn is usually a time when you know, uh, you could have some hard words with those in authority. It could be a little bit of a, a difficult message or a message that either doesn't get across or a message that uh, is, you know, you, you're really held to account for what you say. However, Mercury is in his own home sign of Gemini. So he's he can handle Saturn at this point, especially with Saturn you know, sort of doing the doggy paddle out there in Pisces, you know, Saturn doesn't really love that mutable energy. And so we could get a couple of different things going on here. I, I think that basically speaking, uh, the the feel of the 15th of June is one of there's a deadline or there's something due or you have something to communicate and it could be a little source of anxiety, you know, 14th and 15th type of thing. And it it very likely does not wind up being quite the uh, quite the heavy kind of energy that you might expect. You know, when you get heavy energy is two days later when Saturn stations. And this really goes from the 15th through the 18th. But Saturn stations go retrograde on the 17th. Now, what do you do with a Saturn retrograde? Okay, uh, when Saturn stations, oftentimes immunity is kind of lowered and we get a lot of little bugs going around, minor illnesses, minor illness stuff, you know, colds and things like that, sometimes stomach virus, I guess in Pisces, maybe some sort of stomach virus type of thing, maybe maybe transmitted, oh, well, let's not make a big thing out of it. Look, um, the allergies are a real possibility with Saturn and Pisces, and we could look for, especially at that time of the year, right, mid-June, we could be looking at some real heavy allergy season. I think we're already having a pretty heavy allergy season here in the Northeastern United States. But we could have stuff like that going on. So you want to take care of yourself. You want to, you want to, generally speaking, you know, don't overdo it. Make sure that, you know, you're, you're eating healthy and so on. Well, that's easy to say, uh, but at the same time, we're also coming into the new moon. Right? The new moon is on the 18th. Now, Saturn stations, what do you want to do? You want to, you want to take care of yourself, but you also want to work through them. Right? You want to put out effort, not expecting great results with Saturn stationing, but you want to work through. You want to put in the effort. You want to show Saturn, who's very strong when he stations, you want to show him that you're willing to put out the effort. You may not get much results, but you want to try. And yet just a day later is the new moon. So the, you know, the celestial energy is running kind of low. We're not really feeling for it. And this new moon is square to Neptune. And so this begins the Neptunian phase of the month, right? So Saturn wants you to work through his station and, you know, just put out some good effort. But it's the new moon, it's a weekend, and it's square to Neptune, and it's just really a little bit difficult to 
get traction. I mean, even Saturn's in Pisces, right? So, you know, even Saturn station has this Neptunian vibe, a little hard to get traction, a little hard to get stuff done, um, a little hard to know what to do, perhaps. So with the sun square to Saturn and the moon square to Saturn, uh, not Saturn, Neptune, with uh, the moon and the sun both square to Neptune at this new moon, we could be looking at a period of time, we're probably looking at a period of time where we're going to see too much or too little in people or situations, right? You make heroes out of people, you make demons out of people, things get exaggerated, and yet it's the new moon, so it could be, if we're not careful, some folks, not you, but some folks are going to seed issues, they're going to seed problems because they're they're encoding this sort of delusion about things being so much better or worse than they really are into the lunar energy. So it's going to expand over the course of the next month. You don't want to do that. So looking now, 17th and 18th. Strategy here is do what work you can do. Don't have great expectations for things and back off as much as possible. This is very likely not the most fun weekend of June. This is very likely this is very likely the least fun weekend of June. Although if you kind of take some time for yourself, if you kind of back off and do stuff on your own terms, in your own way, and have you know tempered expectations, very likely it'll be okay. On the 19th, I have to mention the Jupiter will sextile Saturn. That is the opening sextile of their cycle, which began back in December of 2020 at zero degrees of Aquarius. Again, this is not something, I mean, if you're a Sagittarius, Sag rising or something like that, maybe you're going to get a little something out of this on a personal level. I would look at this to see what is happening on those Aquarian issues of social justice and power of the people and things like that. That's out there for all of us to unpack, though. That's That's a collective aspect. You live in the collective, by the way. That's that's where you that's your address. And the, the collective is not something other people are doing on television. This is where you live. But we're not expecting too much out of this right away. It's a very big aspect to have just a day after a new moon. All right, on the 21st at 1057 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Calculate that for yourself. The sun moves into Cancer, and we have the summer solstice, unless you're in the southern hemisphere, in which case you have the winter solstice. But for most of us, it's the summer solstice. All right, so the sun is as high in the sky as he gets, as northward as he'll move. It's the longest day of the year. Things start going downhill from here, and yet they go downhill very slowly around the solstices. Things don't change that much around the solstice. Uh, not like the equinox. At the equinox, things you know, you have a couple of minutes a day change. At the solstice, it's a very, very minimal change. So, you know, we, we, it's a start of summer. It's an upbeat, positive time. And yet it also is a reminder that just at the peak of the light, it starts to diminish. Hmm. What are you going to do? Um, we'll take a look at what happens in different areas uh, we'll do a, a video on the solstice later in the month, and we'll look at the areas that are going to be affected, uh, that are most affected, the areas where the sun is angular. And um, we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at that as we move on. Brazil. I'm just telling you. Then on the 25th, we have Mercury square to Neptune. Mercury is in his own home sign of Gemini. Neptune is in his home sign of Pisces. Everybody's good. <laughs> well, yeah, these are both dual signs, right? We have the twins of Gemini. We have the two fish of Pisces. And so, um, you know, we might think of this as being, you know, both planets are dignified. This is a tense aspect, though. But in dual signs, I mean, are we going to are we going to avoid the duplicity of Mercury Neptune aspects, or is it going to be duplicity squared since they're both dual signs? We'll have to wait and see. My bet, though, is the twenty fourth and the twenty fifth don't do anything practical. Think about it as being Mercury retrograde on steroids. It's a short period of time. It's only a few days. 
but it's a very intense, powerful kind of time. Yes, don't sign a contract. Don't don't buy computers and software. Don't you know install a new app on your phone. D don't order anything. If you want to know the truth, this is not a great time to order anything. And and with Venus now moving very close to her, well moving through the shadow of her retrograde um now we want to be really sure that we don't indulge in luxury items and things like that but we'll more on that as we get closer to the retrograde so this 24th 25th let's throw in the 26th at the same time misinformation this is it's not like things you know with mercury retrograde things seem to passively go wrong with mercury square neptune Sometimes people lie. It's a great op it's a great opportunity to lie. But it's an even better opportunity to believe a story that isn't really true. It's a great opportunity to sell somebody else a bill of goods, but you're selling it to yourself too. A story that seems to make sense or is a good, you know, it's a, it's a good story. It can become so believable that the teller believes it. You know, the con the con man on person the cons themselves as much as anybody else with this aspect. So just lay aside practical things, spend your time doing whatever you want to do. That's, you know, it's, it's great for meditation. It's great for creative things. You just play, just play. It's great for play. Go play. It's, good, it's a good thing to do. The sun is high in the sky. Venus is in Leo. We have this aspect here saying we can't really be practical. Why would you want to be practical? And then on the 26th, Mars in Leo squares Uranus in Taurus. Now here we have a very active aspect. This is an, an aspect that is going to incite a lot of people to action impulsive action mars uranus action is impulsive it's not well planned out it's not well thought out it's impulsive action and given the mercury neptune square just days be the day before it's very likely impulsive action that is based on ridiculous information that is not really valid so um i would be very careful i always tell you to be careful driving but i'd be very careful driving around the end of June. Uh, and I would be, I would watch out for people that seem like they're volatile. Hopefully, you know, this will all be just a very verbal kind of uh, sparring if anything at all happens. And hopefully it won't happen at all. Remember, all of this stuff is just the collective thing. It's what we see going on. It's not you and your chart. You've got your own stuff. You know, you've got your own stuff going on. This is, this is the environment that you're swimming in. But you do want to be kind of careful right around the 26th because that Mars Uranus aspect is very hot and people are not really thinking all that straight with Mercury Neptune. In fact, the entire rest of the month, you should really take it off. This last week of the month is very Neptunian, not just because of Mercury Neptune, but also because on the 30th, so let's think 28th, 29th, 30th into July 1st, we have Neptune stationing to retrograde. Neptune stations, am I repeating myself again? Sun square Neptune, Mercury square Neptune, Neptune station. You see things out of proportion. It's everything's in a fisheye mirror. It's like you're looking under a microscope or through a telescope, but you're not getting, everything's magnified. You're not getting a realistic picture of things. You have to lay off no practical decisions, no matter how great they sound, the better they sound, the more you should avoid them. Okay, last week in June, what a wonderful time to just, you know, just let things flow, go for a walk, go go to the beach, go, go, go watch out for the sharks, but go to the beach and enjoy yourself, uh, meditate, create play do not try to do much in the way of practicalities like me i'll be doing the july forecast right around then but you know that's me anyway i will see you for the weekly forecast i will see you for the summer solstice forecast i will see you for the july forecast and i will see you soon